Welcome to the TCU Innovates Podcast. For over 150 years, Texas Christian University has been at the forefront of innovation, and we're just getting started. I'm TCU Chancellor Victor Bashini, And I'm TCU President Daniel Pullen. We are your hosts of TCU Innovates. We highlight the latest stories of innovation and thought leadership across our community. Dream big, be bold, and lead on, Horn Frogs. Hey everybody, it's TCU President Daniel Pullen, and I am uh, bringing you a special summer edition of the TCU Innovates podcast. Um, I've been spending a portion of my summer in France uh, cheering on Team USA, of course, but also the nine student athletes um, at TCU who are participating in a variety of the Olympic sports. Uh, it really is a remarkable moment in TCU history, um, and I've had a chance to uh, see so many uh, members of the Horn Frog family either uh, compete or as spectators all uh, across Paris and uh, and the entire country. Uh, it's been uh, very, very fun to be walking down the Champs-Élysées and hear a Go Frogs chant or what have you. Um, it really is a, a fun time to be a, a horn frog, um, even halfway around the world. Um, and one of the people I met while I was here is Brent Folan, who is a, a TCU uh, alum uh, who has a remarkable TCU story, um, including how he ended up here at the Olympics. So you never know who you're going to meet when you put yourself out in the world. And I have had the great chance to, to meet Brent Folan. So Brent, uh, tell us just a little bit about yourself and your TCU story. And then how did you make it uh, all the way here to the Olympics in Paris? Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. So I uh, graduated from TCU back in 2013. Student body president in 2012, which was fun. The uh, the good old bronze super frog was my was my child. But yeah, in 2016, I decided to go to the Summer Olympics. Uh, I'd been very lucky. Uh, I've attended the NBA Finals, the World Series, the Super Bowl, and the Olympics was always the pinnacle of all the sports that I wanted to see. And uh, fellow alum Joe Brown had been to the London Olympics and uh, told me how amazing it was. So. Three years before the 2016 Olympics, we made a pact that we would go together. Three years later, we went and uh, turned into a life-changing trip where I took selfies with athletes kind of as a joke to send back to my family just so they know that I was safe in Rio and ended up going viral. I was in the Wall Street Journal, was on Good Morning America and got sponsored at the Olympics. So I ended up skipping my flight, went to 33 events and uh, after that got a sponsorship to travel the world. So. It truly changed my life. Been, been traveling the world ever since. It's been almost eight years on the road, 113 countries, all seven continents, all because of selfies at the Olympics. So pretty wild. I'm very happy to be back. Wow. So, well, what makes a good selfie? What, 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 uh, what, what do you have to know about <laughs> how, to, how to go viral? <laughs> so uh, for me, it's just, it was always right place, right time. Yeah. Um, I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, mm -hmm. and my brother and I lived at Bush Stadium. And one of the cool things about baseball, one of the few sports in the world where if you catch it, you keep it. And a lot of people go their whole lives without catching a baseball. Evan and I, who's also a horned frog, got so good at catching base, but finding, you know, being the right place at the right time, we would leave every game with one or two baseballs each. And so it's just putting yourself in an opportunity to make something happen. If, if you want to meet the meet someone, like yesterday I met Tom Cruise at women's gymnastics, right? It's just have your eye on the prize. If you see somebody you want to meet, have the courage to go say hi, because even if they're super famous, they're just like you and I, that at the end of the day, they're human as well. Yeah. So just starting that conversation, you never know where it'll go. Yeah. You never know. And it can, and it can be life altering in such a positive way as it, as it has for you. So, wow. 33 different events. Uh, what are your favorites? So what are the ones you could maybe wow. pass on? Wow. Um, in 2016, I was so lucky. saw Phelps win his 400 IM finals. I saw two of uh, three of Usain Bolt's races, size 100 meter and 200 meter gold medal uh, sprints. Um, got the got to go to the USA men's basketball gold mat, medal match. So I, mean, I, I pretty much did it all. And I'm on, I'm on track to hit 32 events here in Paris. Wow. And uh, Look at, looking for round two, had that Tokyo COVID break. Disappointing there, so I've been, been prepping almost eight years for this and I'm glad to glad to finally be here. That's great. Is there anything that you're looking forward to, either event-wise or that you think is gonna be particularly historic in uh, this year's games? Yeah, definitely. I would say Katie Ledecky. Um, she's someone I hope we get a selfie with, but to see her win another gold would be incredible. I'll beat at uh, two of her races, which will be nice. Um, also, I have tickets to the men's gold medal basketball game as well, uh, so if I can see LeBron James get another gold. That would be very historic. And two days ago was was at Roland Garros and got to see Nadal play uh, doubles with Carlos Alcaraz, which was amazing. Great first round, but I have 
tickets to the gold medal match for men's doubles. So it would be amazing, absolutely amazing and historic for him to get one more gold uh, since he's the king of clay. So yeah. a, lot of, a lot of big moments that could happen. We'll see. Sports, you never know, but that that's the beauty of it. Yeah, for sure. Well, I love it. You're putting yourself in a great, a great position to be part of that uh, history. Um, so I know you're here, you know, volunteering. What does that entail? What is your day to day as you as you navigate the the Olympics? Yeah. Um, so I applied almost two years ago. I did the same thing in Rio, uh, and the role I got this year was to be a driver. So basically, any of the delegations that need rides. Um, a couple of days ago, I was driving. So we there's three separate cars that we get assigned to, um, all very green. I drove a hydrogen car for the first time while I was here, and. A couple of days ago, I was driving the president of the French, uh, or sorry, the president of the German Fencing Association. So it's, oh, wow. it also drove some of the uh, trainers of USA Indoor Volleyball. Um, so really, it's just, again, right place, right time. And um, I'm volunteering 14 days, and they're eight hour shifts. So I'd made my schedule to either in the morning, at night, whatever whatever free time I have, I'm, I'm doing one to two events, sometimes three events per day. So luckily, after the opening, my last day of working was opening ceremony. They gave me four days off and I'll be volunteering again here soon. That's awesome. And you've already gone to a few events, it sounds like. Yeah, What's yeah. What's your favorite one and why? Wow. Um, gosh, tennis Tennis was, was pretty magical. But um, yesterday, fencing. Uh, I also volunteered with, with Team USA as part of a thing called the Welcome Experience. Hmm. So when the USA athletes showed up, I was one of the volunteers that got to give them all their free swag, uh, their opening closing ceremony stuff from Ralph Lauren, uh, their Nike kits for their medal ceremonies as well as for the media. Uh, but one of the teams that I got to take around was the fencing team and befriended a lot of the staff. And I told them I had tickets last night and I said, hey, find us, find us. And when someone says that, I take them up on it. And so last night I found them and uh, it, it was very historic, the, uh, the women. USA women all finals. So it was USA versus USA for gold and silver, first time in history. And not only did they both medal, but then they invited me to the after party. So last night I got to hold both the the, the gold and the silver medal with the athletes. So it, it, it's been remarkable, man. The, the people you get to meet, just again, starting that conversation and being friendly, kind of mm -hmm. what we talk about at TCU, right? And, you know, be a global citizen. Yeah. Get to know as many people as you can because you don't know what doors will open. Yeah. Well, I just, I, I love that philosophy. It's, you know, and, and I know you've traveled all over the world and are definitely a global a global citizen. I share your, your love for travel as well. Um, we're working really hard to open the doors of opportunities for more of our students at TCU to do things like study abroad and have an international experience you know, with the stated goal of, um, uh, having over 50% of our students have uh, that opportunity and maybe someday all of them will um, but um, but it is an area of, of, of forward focus for us um, as you've traveled internationally you know what have your experiences been like how have you what have you learned about yourself or others um, and what uh, types of, of skill sets or mindsets do you think our students can expect if they do participate in the TCU study abroad program yeah great question uh, so I actually I had to make the choice back when I was a student and on if I would study abroad or focus on student politics, focus on student politics, which was amazing. It yeah. was fun serving as president, but you know, not that I was disappointed, not that I would change time, but there was always, I, I always wanted to travel. I always want to see the world. And, and luckily the, the selfies provided that opportunity and really haven't looked back. I, I would say one of the biggest things is rather than fear differences, embrace them, go to these other cultures, learn everything that you can. These locals, you might not even speak the same language. You will find a way to communicate, whether it's through hand signs or even learning their local language or Google Translate. Everyone has a story. And at the end of the day, you learn, sure, we're from different places, but everyone has the same struggle, same insecurities. And we're all just trying to do our, our best at life. And so uh, just just get to know everyone. Go for it. If you're thinking about traveling, book the flight and go because it'll be the best decision of your life. Yeah, well, I, uh, I I appreciate that. And I, you know, I couldn't couldn't agree more. So you've been traveling uh, extensively. You've been here in Europe for what almost two months now? Almost, yeah, seven almost yeah seven weeks or so. I, yeah, I've lost count. Yeah. <laughs> Every day's a Saturday. <laughs> what a summer! What a summer! Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, what's uh what's next once the the games conclude? What's, uh, wow. what's the next chapter of the that's, flight for you? You know, I. Who knows what's going to happen here? The Olympics, they, there's that Olympic magic where a lot of doors could open. And um, I'm going to ride this wave. I'll be here until August 14th. So I'll be 
like I said, 32 events. I'll be at the closing ceremony. Who knows what stories will unfold, what hands I shake. Um, so right now, I I enjoying the ride. Um, my my wife is back in Texas. We're probably going to be moving to Puerto Rico. She's ready ready to, to slow down a bit. <laughs> I've got a few more adventures I want to do, but you know, I, I got a compromise there. We're ready to start a family here soon. Um, so yeah, I, I've been a professional scuba diver the last couple of years. Uh, Puerto Rico will be a perfect place. I've loved Texas, but having the ocean, you know, having the Caribbean and being able to dive every day is is something I've always wanted. And we'll probably be there by the end of the year. Oh, that's great. Well, I'm, I'm excited for, for that next chapter for you. And it sounds like you're, uh, uh, you're, you're making great plans. Um, you'd mentioned uh, the closing ceremonies. Uh, what do you think of the opening ceremonies? That was a kind of a, a <laughs> twist on how that's usually done. A twist, man. I, it was soaked. I was soaked. <laughs> I, I, I've never been that wet in my life. That was wild. But it, it was cool. Um, I was able to secure a ticket, which was nearly impossible. I was in the fan zone, so we were near, if you watch the opening ceremony, the bridge where they had the DJ and they did the fashion show. It was it was unique. It was definitely made for TV. Um, I'm glad I only spent 99 euros on the ticket. It was neat how they incorporated so much of the city. Mm -hmm. Seeing the athletes come through on a boat, I think it would have been better if it was dry. Right. But I was able to see the Eiffel Tower. You could see part of the light show, which was which was neat. So very very glad I did it. I'm hoping. Actually, I'm really looking forward to the closing ceremony because it'll be all in one place mm -hmm. and able to enjoy it all in person rather than watch a screen for 90% of the time. Yeah, absolutely. How were the crowds? I mean, it, 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 it was a long ceremony. It rained uh, essentially the entire yeah. ceremony. Yes. <laughs> you know, and I tell you what, the crowds, <laughs> it was wild. Met a lot of Americans, uh, but a lot of the French came in for mm -hmm. it. My section was a party. They had music going, everyone was dancing. I mean, even though we were soaked, truly dancing in the rain. And um, it, 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 what's special for me for the Olympic, like the last Olympics I went to, it was my first taste of like seeing the world, right? Yeah. Seeing these cultures. Now this round, it's like, I've been to a lot of these countries and it's now I have, it's a much more personal experience talking about their their local cities, you know, their, their countries as well. And so it was it was a massive party. Everyone loved the opening ceremony and um, just all the countries, you know, all these spectators coming together, taking photos together, learning from each other. It doesn't get much better than that. I mean, you'll hear com people complain, oh, we're in line and security for two hours. Well, I made the most of it. I met yeah. people, you know, I met people from all over the world and got to talk to them. So life's what you make it. Even if you're stuck in line for two hours, you're at the opening ceremony of the Olympics. So. Remarkable experience. I'm glad I went. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad you did as well. And, you know, hopefully you'll have a chance to, you know, in the, I think you said you were tracking to do 32 events this uh, this time. Hopefully you'll get to see some of our Horn Frog uh, student athletes who yes. are participating. You know, we have nine, which is a record for TCU. Um, and they, you know, are representing seven different countries in five different sports. And, you know, you and I met um, at the uh, uh, Women's Beach Volleyball Competition, um, uh, which was just fa fa fantastic when I had um, the opportunity to support, as you did, uh, Daniela Alvarez and Tanya Moreno, who um, it's the first time uh, TCU, and maybe um, I was talking to Coach Gutierrez not too long ago, he said it's maybe the only, the second university that's had two Olympians um, in, the same, in the same game in beach volleyball. Um, so when you think about those nine students, what do, you, what do you think the impact on TCU athletics or the overall brand of the institution might be uh, to have have such, such prominent participation on the global stage. Oh, it's massive. I mean, it's it's never it, it's never been a better time to be a Horn Frog. It's amazing. Like we, sure the girls are wearing a different flag, right, representing Spain. But at the end of the day, we all we all bleed purple. Yeah. And so it's, I think it's going to be huge for the university. I think recruiting wise, it'll be a great asset to to have these Olympians who have gone through the program and uh, can. You know, they, they're a horned frog for life. Yeah. And so it's going to be very neat to see how their careers continue. Maybe they come back, but having those eight, nine students, student athletes as Olympians, you can't beat that. So massive, massive for the school and very excited to see what happens. Yeah, that's great. Well, I'm so, I'm so proud of them. They've, uh, 
uh, already started uh, to represent us uh, so beautifully and it's just been wonderful to see so many other horned frogs that are uh, taking the time and participating um, whether it's uh, you know on the field or on the beach in this case or um, in the stands uh, you know, cheering their heart out it's uh, it is a it, I agree with you I don't think there has ever been a better time to be a horned frog than than right now um, well any uh, any uh, advice you have for um, our students or even our you know recent alumni is there uh, you know, launching into the world? Yeah, I'd say one big thing is uh, it's easy to get stuck in that career. I think a big part of the, the U.S. culture is to to travel. Once you retire, you're going to work, you know, 40, 50 years. And and then once you, you reach retirement, you're going to start seeing the world. I'd encourage you to just start sooner, whether it's studying abroad or as crazy as it sounds, maybe take a gap year. I know some of the athletes have done that. Um, it can be frowned upon in the U.S. culture, but I've never learned more than I have traveling. Um, it, and again, the people you'll meet, doors will open. You don't need to be afraid about, oh, but my career, work will always be there. But the, these years will race by and it's much better. After meeting a lot of older people who have been traveling, they've all told me, you've done it the right way. Do it while you're young, while you can still do everything. Climb those mountains, go scuba diving, go skydiving, bungee jumping, whatever makes you happy to feel like you fully lived life, go for it. I appreciate that advice. I know a lot of our listeners do as well. And I just appreciate your enthusiasm and, 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 and the way that you're continuing to support and represent uh, TCU. Um, thank you for all that you do. And um, I wish you the best of luck with the rest of, uh, of, of your Olympic experience and then all those exciting ne next chapters that I know are on the horizon for your, for your life. So. Um, well, that wraps it up. Um, thanks again to uh, Brent Follin, who is a TCU alum, former student body president, uh, international traveler. Uh, and maybe soon to be selfie king of Paris. And we'll see. see. Maybe, we'll see. And, and, and maybe I'm talking <laughs> right now to the selfie king of Paris. Well, but how about we take a selfie at the end Let's of do this and get, get the party started? Absolutely. All right. Any last words uh, for our listeners, Brent? That's it. Hey, go Frogs. Thanks for having me. All right, everybody. This That'll wrap up another special edition of TCU Innovates uh, from the Olympic Games in Paris, France. Thanks for listening and go frogs. Go frogs. The TCU Innovates podcast is recorded at the KTCU studio in the Bob Schieffer College of Communications at Texas Christian University. Thank you to the KTCU team for supporting our show. Go frogs. <laughs>